And we're back. And if you have a peanut allergy, I'm sorry, because I have peanut butter cookies. Mm. Mm. So who is this guy? This is Vigloff. Vigloff is a smith, and he's one of our bonus characters. Because now it's time to play the most important part of Skyrim, which is Skyrim dress up. Anyone who's familiar with fashion souls, same thing, only much broader. You see, in fashion souls, you only have one character to dress up. In Skyrim, you have lots of characters to dress up. So we are going to do that. So the first thing we need to do is sort of parcel out some of our items and deal with them. we got all this crap that we have to go through to turn it into raw materials. So thanks to, uh, I want to say, not immersive armors, but complete crafting. We can salvage it. So I can take my leather. And I can turn my wolf pelts into leather. Cave troll pelts. And this isn't actually, this is part of the game, uh, vanilla, I believe. But um, salvaging armor is what will let me turn that into them so I can go with turn my hide bracers into leather strips. Super useful. Alright, now some of this we're going to want to keep. But all of our like random odds and sides. I have 30 pairs of hide boots. I don't need 30 pairs of hide boots. I don't need 3 pairs of hide boots. And if I do, I can make more. Let's keep eight for now. I can also turn leather into leather strips. I cannot, however, turn leather strips into leather. Stormcloak caresses, definitely not gonna need any of those. Uh, we're probably not gonna wear white run guard armor. We're definitely not gonna need 16 sets of studded armor, but let's trim it down a bit. We got a couple of different suits of vampire armor, so let's bust up one of those. Hide is going to give us fur plate, which we're going to use to um, cut up and put the fur on armor. Also leveling our smithing like crazy. Where's that? I don't want to chop it all yet because I might need some of it. So you'll notice that I am carrying too much to be able to run, but I'm not slowed down. This is because I am in god mode. Uh, if you are in god mode and you go in your inventory, <clears throat> you can carry an infinite amount of stuff. So I have 4,500 pounds. And the reason why I'm doing that is, A, I'm not leaving this floor uh, <clears throat> so I don't feel like an awful person. And B, it just makes walking around so much easier and you don't have to like play fetch with your chests or anything like that. Again, it just it skips a bunch of the crappy part. So let's go into our... We don't have anything we need to deal with here. So the next place we want to go is the Skyforge. Go to the miscellaneous area. I can do a couple of things here. Uh, one of them is I can cut this sapphire. With a couple of flawless sapphires, we've got a regular one there, or a couple of um, emeralds, I can do some pretty cool things. We can also learn some ancient Nordic smithing techniques. So, now we can make our own, as weird as it sounds, ancient Nord weapons. I mean, I guess they're in the style of ancient Nords. You're damn right I'm a cheater. I'm a super scrub who likes to walk around fast. Uh, 
when he's uh, playing dress up. But I mean, because they're not, I guess, actual, actually ancient, because we just made them. So we've dealt with that. And what we're going to do is make some weapons and some armor for our characters. The so first thing we're going to need to do is smelt some of the stuff we have. So, for example, we don't need a billion longbows and hunting bows, so we'll turn those into charcoal. We can take that and turn it into with iron into steel later. For hoods, for mantles, uh, iron gauntlets. Get rid of a couple of those. I don't need 33 iron daggers. I probably need maybe one. Maybe one. We'll keep three for now. And then once the stream is done, I'll do like a final thing. Iron swords we're probably not going to need. We're going to make a lot of stuff out of steel. Uh, iron war axes. Got a bunch of ancient Nord things here. Yeah, and then once we're done everything, I'm going to go through and do a final cleanup. Shovel. Because ideally, everybody's going to have their own suits of gear. And we're going to improve those and change them as we go. Stormcloak helmets. Goodbye. We don't need eight battle axes. Or six great swords. Uh, or a white run guard helmet, mostly because they look stupid. Thirteen iron shields seems like a bit much. Maybe two? Oh, and we have 50 iron ore. So, yeah, there's there's that, too. All right, now let's turn some of that into steel. 20 steel ingots. Let's see what else we, can, we have with steel we can break down. Steel swords. Maybe cut that down to four. Um, ooh, 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 that's a scimitar. We might need that scimitar. But steel daggers. Again, we don't really need those. Don't need five steel maces. Certainly don't need those Stormcloak officer boots. Leather, we can turn our high bucklers into leather. Leather, I find, is one of the leanest um, things. And we can turn some of our elven stuff into moonstone. We're gonna bust up some of our stuff into corundum. We've got some earrings that we can turn into a gold ingot. And a silver ore. Alright, so now we've got a bunch of components. So now let's think about who do we... I'm just gonna pull everything out of here too. Who do we need to dress up? Well, I usually sort of divide it up between warriors, wizards, explorers or adventurers or thieves, and then support characters like Vigloff here, who looks like sort of a weird ver version of Jason Momoa. Although not as much as he used to. So let's start with Janet. So Janet is the best, obviously, and Janet gets first pick. She's going to need some light armor. And I have a lot of different armors. So uh, the tricky bit is armor looks different on women than it does on men, especially uh, stuff like this. So this is from the Terra armor set. And Terra is a really fun game. It's an MMO. And the tricky bit is um, Terra armor looks one way on dudes and looks another way on ladies. And by another way another way on ladies, I mean they are super scantily clad. And it's not really my jam, and it's certainly not Janet's jam. 
but it also means that we're not really gonna know well, what this looks like unless we get a woman to try it on or we have we smith it as a woman and we've already established that big laugh is a dude that's okay I think Janet's into more of the, the light armor And we gotta be careful with fruit with armor because we only got 24 pieces of leather. So let's see what else we can pull here. Blade dancer, studded armor. We already opted out of um, we already opted out of stuff like, um, oh, my brain, my brain just totally fell apart. Uh, stuff like the barbarian armor, so stuff that's like super scantily, uh, we decided that really isn't her jam. So maybe for now we just give her leather armor. A loner, the loner set is from the, uh, the Witcher. Yeah, with a flawless sapphire, we could make uh, this awesome illusion. On the Oathbreaker is also from Witcher. Give her the Thane's armor. Do we have any Imperial options? Not really. We'll need to, some, some armor is faction limited, so we'll need to join factions before we can uh, deal with it. Maybe we'll give her the Highwayman mail for now. So let's go take a look at Janet's armor situation right now. So she's got hide boots of strength, hide bracers, and fur armor. Well, let's take that fur armor off and let's go with highway one now. I think that's a bit more her speed. It's not super bulky and as, as we improve materials we'll be able to improve her armor, but it's not super bulky. We're going to take her axe. Because we're going to make Janet something better. Janet uses two-handed weapons. So. Let's head into steel. And see what we can get. As a two-handed weapon. Argonian battle blade. Not really her style. I think axe is still what we're looking for. Axe staff, got a Viking double axe. Maybe a little, lacks a little finesse. Boarding great axe. The nice thing about it is you don't really, it doesn't really matter. Like, you can use pretty much any weapon you want. And you'll do fine. Reinforced battle staff. Doesn't strike me as a. Ooh, we could go with uh, Skyforge Steel Battle Axe. That's. Yeah, that I think is Janet's jam. So let's forge one of those. Alright. Let's grab that Skyforge axe. I'm just putting it up right away. Oh, we're in the armor section, that's why. There we are. 
and we'll improve them all afterward. But for now, so who else have we got? Well, Henry. Henry also wears light armor. Now Henry's Henry's going to get issued armor by the Empire. So he can wear whatever until then, and then he's probably going to wear Imperial armor for most of the game. But we need to give him a good bow. Go with green arrows bow here. And we need to give him, uh, I believe his weapon of choice is a hand axe, but let's take a look just to be sure. Henry, yeah, he uses axes. Uh, Pavel uses dual wield, so he's going to need two, uh, probably two swords if we can get it. Um, Raiden's going to fight with hammers uh, and spells. And Elena is going to need a two-handed sword. All right. So, let's make those. Henry's going to need an axe. Can give him a boarding axe. I think we can do a little better. Let's go with fine Norse axe. All right. So let's go equip Henry's little statue. And this is why I made sure that we still had some armor intact. So we're gonna walk over here. We're gonna look at our armor. Henry wears light armor because he's an archer, and because we said so in the character creation stream. So let's take a look at our light armor. We got barbarian armor, but that's not really his style. Uh, let's go with the hide armor of the squire. I think let's go with studded armor. And then we'll get some fur or hide bits. Get some fur bracers, some hide boots, and a fur helmet. So we're going to hide that anyway. And get his bow. Maybe searching for axe is not a great plan, and his axe. So this is what Henry's going to look like when we first start him. Not to worry, he will improve. What's up? So we need Henry, let's do Elena. Now, Elena is going to need a two-handed sword, so we're going to head back into steel and see what we can get. We can get a giant two-handed Zambato. That's, that's not super cool. We also don't have the Quicksilver for it. Now, there's that Argonian Battle Blade, but I think we wanted to get something straighter. Dragon Carved Greats are going to be great. We might get there at some point, but we're not there right now. Heavy Crusader Sword. That's pretty good. Knight's Great Sword. Hmm. 
Oathkeeper Greatsword. Yeah, if we had more silver, we could uh, do some of these upgraded silver weapons. Skyforge Steel Greatsword is not really my jam. There's always a Steel Giant Sword. Oh, we could also give her something like a Halberd. What she's got right now, I think, is this Steel Longsword. There's a couple of them. Steel Nodachi. She doesn't really seem like the, uh, the Nodachi type. Toriel's War Sword. Thor's Hammer. We're just going to make this for uh, Raiden right now. Witcher's Steel Sword. So I've got a Witcher mod in here. Alright. I think we're going to go up through Steel. And we're going to go with Heavy Crusader Sword. That's my last silver ingot. Okay, she's gonna need some armor. She wears heavy armor, so let's get her the Eisen armor. In black. helmet for her in time. I've got iron helmets left, I believe. So she's all set. Now Raiden, uh, we just uh, we just gave him some... Or we found his weapon, but he's going to need a shield and some armor. I could just go with Nordic Steel, which I think we're going to do for right now, but let's take a spin through... So auxiliary armors adds a whole ton of new armor to the game. So you got ranger armor and ringmail armor and all kinds of things. This is just a small selection. As our smithing skill gets better, it's going to unlock a ton more. But I'm not seeing anything in here. Well, we can make him a shield. So let's make him a... Uh, uh, Painted round shield, we'll pick that up later. And then steel, let's just go with steel Nordic, I think. Just keep an eye on our uh, leather supply here. I can't make the helmet because we don't have any go horns. I realize how weird that sounds, but we can't make the helmet because we don't have any go horns. Alright, so let's go put these on our respective statues. So we've got... This is going to be Elena. And this is going to look weird because... So it's not actually ebony armor, which is what this is. Uh, it looks that way because there isn't a male mesh for it. And her weapon was... What did we settle on? The Heavy Crusader Sword. Oh, it's weird. Listen, Crusader Sword, if you can't cooperate, we're going to have to replace you. As a sword, it is your obligation to look cool in a weapon rack. But you do look really cool, so maybe we'll keep you for now. On the other side, we'll get Raiden. So Raiden's got the... Uh, Ooh, that's terrifying. 
the Nordic steel armor. He is going to need some kind of helmet. Preferably a head, or preferably a head, preferably a heavy one. So we'll just give him an iron helmet for now. And then we need a shield. Just the painted round shield and his weapon, which is Thor's hammer. So we're going to put Thor's hammer there and the shield up there. Also, put in place our Axe of Whiterun. We were given this when we became Thane of Whiterun. And now it sits in a place of honor in our hold. Look at that. And we have enough spots for almost all the holes. What's that? Now, Pavel, Pavel's going to need some gear. Pavel's going to need some armor. And I'm thinking. We want to go into auxiliary armors, and we want to grab ring mail. It's a lot of leather, though. Still, it's so cool. All right, we'll we'll eat into it. We gotta do some commerce. So, oh, we just leveled up our smithing to twenty-five. So now we've unlocked a whole bunch of new armor recipes so we can get mercenary armor and dweener armor and bosmer armor which is high elves and let's make Pavel a pair of swords he's probably got some really like esoteric sword tastes so I'm thinking Dragon Sting, which is a sword made out of dragon scales. And the Alban Sword. Sort of a cool curved sword. So Pavel is taken care of. We did Janet, Henry, Pavel, uh, Raiden, and Elena. Who else have we unlocked? Well, we unlocked uh, recently Helen, who's our warlock. Now, we can give her some black mage gear, but it's also going to take up a bunch of leather, so we might want to wait on that. So we've got a few other options. Uh, we can also make a tier 2 sword. Maybe. Because if we can make a tier 2 sword, uh, like an elven sword, or an elven weapon, then we can unlock Ooh, gray blade. This looks cool. I just want to point out how cool this looks. Because I think we're going to make it. I think what we're going to do, because the Crusader sword's not behaving, we're going to make the gray blade. That's going to unlock our dragon slayer. I'm just having a staff meeting back there. Huh? See you again, okay. But it's also okay, Crusader Sword. I needed you to play well. Yeah, that looks pretty sweet. Elena's gonna love it. Look at that thing. 
That sword is unnecessarily large. Ah! Oh! Fine. I blame the weapon rack. Alright, Pavel. Uh, we said ring mail for you. Yeah, like, how is that not an awesome look for a vampire hunter? And then we have the Alban Sword. And what was the other sword that we took? It was Dragon Sting. Oh, right, it only takes the sword of my main hand. Look at that. This Pavel is going to look so cool when we go hunting vampires. It's going to be a pile of throwing knives, but... We can do that. So we got all four of our warriors kitted out. We haven't really gotten into rogues or adventures yet, but we will. We're going to need more leather before we can do more armor, though. So what we're going to do is clean up the rest of these materials. These are all materials that come conveniently equipped on bandits, and man, do we kill a lot of bandits. So. We're also going to use this to equip our followers, but that'll be, that'll be a bonus stream for another day. Alright, so that's all the leather. Um, with some tundra cotton, we can make some water skin. So we definitely have some of that. We can also make uh, satchels to improve our stats and tents so that we can camp. Let's make a camping kit. Then we'll go to the smelter. And we'll smelt the rest of our weapons and armor that we picked up. So before we smelt them, let's go to the enchanting table. So the way enchanting works in Skyrim is you find cool magic stuff, you disenchant it, and you wind up with that stuff. Or, or with those enchantment, enchantments available, and it's based on your enchanting skill. So we're going to disenchant a bunch of things. We're not going to disenchant cool things, like the black blade and the black bow. And you can see that once you've disenchanted something once, you can't disenchant it again. It destroys the item, but it levels your enchanting skill, and you learn the enchantment. So... Improve blocking, improve light armor, destruction. We're going to keep this necklace of alchemy, because for right now it does better as a necklace than it does uh, with our ability to enchant it. Um, minor sure grip, though, we're going to get rid of that. Minor knight, rogues of conjuration. I think we're going to keep the Magic Resist Cloak, too. But we're going to disenchant the Amulet of Julianos. So you can see, I think, why I turned off leveling for skills like smithing and, enchant and enchanting. As well as alchemy. We haven't done the alchemy yet. And it's just because I like doing this stuff. I do a lot of it. Um, we're going to pick Magicka. I like doing it, and it means that you get like a million levels. 
So our alteration is at 31, which is super cool. There's no real perks we want for that. Um, the Ancestral Awakening perk is really good depending on what race you are. I.e. Breton. See the stream where I got heckled to be a Breton over and over again, but uh, we are an Imperial so it doesn't do very much for us and that, thus it doesn't trivialize the entire game. Um, get some enchantment so we can double the durations of all our potions. And we're going to use potions to make money at some point. But not right now. So we can get some smithing bonuses. I think we're going to get Fists of Steel. We also need... Oh, we're so close. To two-handed 30. We might just hold on to these perks. You can see that as I gain levels, I get new perks uh, by default so is it 25 50 75 and 100 you can dual cast spells but some of the opening ones we really want to save for so restoration for example we can get improve our magicka regeneration which is going to be super useful so I think I think we're actually going to sit on these for now. Those three perks is a lot. So, we have... No, we are on our way to demolish all the rest of the things that we own. So... Let's go through iron. Yeah, I promised I would talk about modular robot future. I'm watching History of the Power Rangers uh, for reasons. Uh, mostly because it's really good. That's uh, by Linkara at uh, atop the fourth wall. And what interests me about, I mean, there's lots of things that I find interesting about the Power Rangers and sort of the way that that narrative spins out. But one of the things that interests me about the way that they're sort of universe works is that not only does almost anything turn into a giant robot, like anything you find as a superhero turns into a giant robot that you can drive around. But all giant robots can be combined with all other giant robots. No question. If you, like, if, even if it's the enemy's robot, it will combine with yours um, if you can control both robots, and then you will now have some sort of... And combining robots is always good. It always makes your robot better. It never makes things worse. It never makes things more cumbersome. It's a delightful world. It's also a world where you've got, like, super science and magical realism which I find really intriguing as a combination so we're just gonna sort out some stuff here oh yeah we can do that too yeah we have one piece of leather left So we put all our crafting materials back. Let's throw some of our hearth fire materials that we found into here. Just a couple of hinges and locks. But yeah, combining robot future is weird. Uh, I like the idea. Uh, but one of the, so one of the things we have in the corner of our house is this big cool display. And this is... 
a claw holding display. So I can't put the ivory, oh I can put the ivory claw in there, but I think I need it for something. So I think I'm going to keep it. I think we're going to need it in the future. Now, of course, we still have lots and lots and lots of things that we weren't able to break down. So we're going to store a few of them. Just to get them out of my inventory. Uh, that window is from dynamic things and what that does is it lets me store things anywhere and make sure that it won't reset the inventory on me. Let's go upstairs. Because what we're going to do is we're going to sort of put this stuff away around the house and as I do I'm going to refine out what I need to sell. And I'm not going to sell it tonight, I don't think. We're getting pretty close to time. Let's actually do backpacks first. And cloaks. So keep our resist magic cloak. Capes. No capes. And so all this we do is make sure that this is a safe container, but everything in my house is a safe container automatically. Thanks to the mod. Let's go through and make sure that yeah. We have a bunch of knapsacks. Knapsacks were introduced in, I want to say Frostfall and also a couple other mods, and they increase my carrying weight. So we're definitely going to use some, but for right now we just want to store them. Alright. Now we're going to take all the clothes. We're just going to tuck them all into, for now, this closet. It is easy to wonder why you would spend time doing this, but when you consider that your average, or like most Skyrim games are going to last for, you know, 50 to 100 to possibly even more hours, starting out organized is really useful. We're going to throw our cultist stuff in here too. Because it looks cool. It is unbelievably useful to start out in a way that's organized and move out from there. Because it makes your life amazingly better. Oh, there's the, all that weight. I'm like, wow, why, why is everything still so heavy? Because I have 50 billion axes that I need to get rid of. So, but we've cleared out all the clothes. And it's just about 9 o'clock. So we're going to load this into the cell cabinet. I want to keep the arrows. I also want to keep any of the legendary stuff. But anything else is just going to go into this cell cabinet and we're going to deal with it later. But we're going to keep the staves too. And once we're done that, we'll head to our spreadsheets and we'll sort of finish out the night.
steel hoods, shields, parrying daggers. Look at that. And now we're below our weight limit. Well below. All right. So, what did we accomplish today? Um, not much. We did unlock a bunch of Vigloff, and as you can see, we've got four, three other bonus characters. So our aristocrat, she buys property. That's her her jam. So some of the mines we cleared out, we can buy and get income from. Things like Winstad Mine, we went and looked at. That's the kind of stuff she's going to own. Um, she's going to own manors and things like that. Grace buys property. Gregory is the merchant. Gregory sells our stuff. He does commerce. And again, this is all going to be bonus stream stuff. We're going to... Tonight I was sort of chilling out, but... Um, in the future, we're, it'll, it'll be like on Sundays and things like that. So if you, you can tune it if you want, but... Um, what we're going to wind up doing is is puttering with that. Uh, it'll let me do some housekeeping, but role playing while you're housekeeping can also be really fun. Uh, Viglaf is the smith, so he does all of our smithing, upgrading, and probably enchanting. Just so you don't, I don't have to switch back and forth to um, upgrade weapons and armor. So he's our gear guy. And Salamanca is our alchemist. So Salamanca is going to deal with um, ingredients, potions. We might actually send him outside on some gathering expeditions. He's going to make potions for everybody to use and for Gregory to sell. So that's going to be a good time. Uh, we spent most of our time as Pavel, where we killed a bunch of vampires. So we definitely accomplished the uh, Morthal vampires, on account of they're all dead. Uh, we upgraded everybody's gear. Janet, Helen, Pavel, Raiden, Henry, and Elena. Uh, Helen's we didn't get to, but I'll definitely uh, deal with it. And... We unlocked, so we made the, that gray blade, which is an elven sword, which is a tier two sword, and we've already done some bounties. So we've unlocked Siegfried, who's our knight. So I'll uh, I'll build him up some armor too in between uh, sessions, and I should be back next week. I've got a lot of prep to do for Maker Expo, but. I should be back next week. Uh, maybe there will even be some art on the wall. Uh, and that will be on Tuesday. In the meantime, you can find me on Twitter and on YouTube, which is where the streams are going to start going up soon, uh, as well as at my website and at Wootsie Riot's YouTube, where we make the Minecraft videos and also do the Concert Christmas podcast. We write music. We do all kinds of things. We make each other brave. We also have a website now. Because uh, we've been relying on our YouTube channel as our website for like three years. But with the pod in conjunction with the podcasting stuff that we're doing at Maker Expo, we need a website. So now we have one. It's at wootsuraya.com or wootsuraya.ca because we're in Canada. And there isn't much there yet. Just some sort of greeting stuff and some crew stuff. I'm in the process of transferring over our backlog. Um, we have 300 and some odd videos, so if you want to go through the Wootsu channel, by all means. But, in the meantime, have a good night, tell some stories, play some games, and uh, I'm probably going to go and hem some pants.